Good evening. Today I'd like to share with you a poem I wrote. I wrote this poem because I felt like there was a valuable lesson. We could all learn from it. Over the last few years, I have been watching my friends as well as myself struggle with their career choice. It's been a difficult time for each of us, being asked to make concrete decisions on who we are and where we're going with our lives, all the while being gently encouraged to follow a certain career path. The adults, we all grew up with certain ideas in our heads and dreams we wanted to follow. The adults would laugh and play along with our ideas until we got old enough to start making serious decisions about our lives. Then we were more or less told what we couldn't do, what we wouldn't be good at, and what careers weren't acceptable. Facing this now, I've decided it's time something changed. My generation's horizons have broadened and we have so many more careers available to us now. This means every one of us has the possibility to have a career we would both be good at, enjoy, and of course, make a living. So without further ado, here's my poem titled, The Rules of Building Lives. I hope you can all learn something from it. What did you want to be when you grew up? When I was six, I wanted to be an author because a cat in a hat was so much better than my boring orange one. When I was eight, I wanted to be an Olympic horseback rider because horses were my home. When I was 10, I wanted to be a psychologist, more so because people confused me than fascinated me. When I was 12, I forgot my answer, leaving blank spaces on biographies and silent lulls in conversation. When I was 14, I gave up answering because everything I had provided was wrong. I didn't have the talent to be an author. I didn't have the skill to be in the Olympics. I would never make money acting or painting. History was a class, not a profession. And teaching was for has-beens. What did I want to be when I grew up? I was confused and still am as to how the simplest answer wasn't acceptable. Happy. Myself. I was and am expected to define myself. Who I am, who I will be, or rather who people think I am who people want me to be. Our castles in the sky have been bombarded and destroyed for as long as I can remember, falling to reality, stones ablaze. But dreams are made of and interwoven into the fabric of the universe. They're made for chasing, for achieving, for living. But they told us, your grades aren't good enough. Your college isn't good enough. You aren't good enough. So we buckle down and get smart about our lives and we end up somewhere we never wanted to be. It's as if society has written rules on how to behave, on how to be yourself, and if at first you don't succeed, then you're a failure. As I stand before you now, I still hold on to my dreams, though people have tried to rip them desperately from my grasp. I am so sick of being bombarded by discouragement, disdain, and displeased diligence, telling me to be rational and give up almost all I've ever hoped for. I know parents are scared. We're scared too. But we want our dreams more than anything. We want our lives. Maybe someday my kids will follow in my footsteps and do something great, but they will never know unless they try. I want to follow my dreams so one day I can tell them even if I failed that I tried and I didn't let fear rule my life. So I ask you not to tell anyone what they should be or who they should, what they should do, but rather encourage them to achieve and to believe in themselves so every one of us can go home happy after a long day at work or at school knowing we're doing what we love. Because it takes the greatest courage to do what you truly want. I leave you with the words of Ray Bradbury. Love what you do, and do what you love. Thank you.